All right, so I did a video I uploaded where I put um, a sweep tone that went from one hertz all the way up to 50 kilohertz and uploaded that to YouTube and then um, downloaded that back down. And we're gonna take a look at uh, the frequency response of YouTube and um, poke around and see what we can find about how uh, YouTube processes videos. Um, so on my screen here, you should be able to see the, um, this video one is the video that I uploaded and uh, this audio one here is the actual sound of the video that I uploaded with me speaking ahead of time. And then here we start the sweep that um, I put a one second um, clip of one hertz. And this is the one to 100. Um, and then we go from 100 to 5,000. And then here we go from 5,000 to 20,000. 20,000 to 50,000 and then we go all the way back down and then here we go from 1 to 30 hertz and back down um, or yeah 1 to 30 hertz and then back down um, you can see here in the initial clip that I uploaded that um, somewhere in the 20 to 50 kilohertz sweep it started to roll off and we were down a bit at 50k and that probably happened either in Adobe Premiere Pro here or um, uh, and most likely in Premiere Pro or my computer. Um, in any case, this is the file that was sent, this um, um, stuff up here. I then went on to YouTube and downloaded the um, file, the video, and uh, here we can see what came back to me. And here you can hear the, see the speaking that I did, and then you can see the, um, uh, you can see it start, the sweep start, and then it goes up to a certain frequency, and then chops off abruptly, and then when it gets back to that frequency, it comes back, and everything in the low is uh, fine. Now here I'm showing it as a mono file, um, but in, in reality, I uploaded it as a stereo file. So here you can see I have stereo voice going up, a mono sweep and stereo um, and roll, B-roll at the end or the, um, the outro. Uh, you can see it's, um, here I've shown it as mono, but in reality it was stereo uploaded to YouTube. I didn't think that was a big issue, but it turns out that we had, we're in for some surprises. So the next thing I wanted to do was determine where this started to, what, what point, what frequency we um, had this abrupt um, cut off here. And we can zoom in on that. And we can see that right in at that frequency, it, uh, it looks like a very, very steep filter where it's chopping, it's got a peak, and um, comes back down. So let's go ahead. Uh, the next thing I did is I created a 16 to 17K um, tone. So what you can see it here, it's a sweep, and it goes from, let's go ahead and zoom this out, and move it over here. Uh, here's a 16K tone uh, for one second, a 16.2K, 16.4K, 16.6, 16.8, and 17K. So I just put in 200 cycle increments um, to try and find out what frequency it is, and then I uploaded all um, that to YouTube. And then, um, sorry, I created that file and I uploaded that to YouTube in multiple formats. So, and then I took those multiple formats that were uploaded to YouTube and I downloaded them back into, and loaded them back into Adobe Premiere. So this first thing that we're seeing is, uh, let's see, 16 to 7, it's 44K, so this is done at a 44.1 sample rate, and it's in mono, and there's a little gap here, YouTube adds a little blur, a little um, pause right at the middle there, at the beginning, um, and then we can see that it's translated, it's come through, and we have the full signal. These little glitches you can see are the uh, shifts between the samples, and 
what's interesting, one thing that's interesting is YouTube actually is, is cutting this a little bit. The sound doesn't start immediately. It starts uh, a very short period of time later, but the sound ends at the same point. So the length, the full length is the, still the same. So that a little takes a little while to ramp up. Um, not a big deal there. Uh, more interesting is here, the second one is the same um, video slash audio upload of those six tones and it was done at 48k or um, saved at 48k I um, rendered at 48k before I uploaded it to YouTube and we can see it looks almost exactly the same if not exactly the same the next one I did in stereo instead of mono and this is 48k that same exact um, uh, video audio sample done at 48k in stereo and here we don't have any audio at all coming back down from YouTube YouTube was unable to um, uh, return any audio on that and then here is the a redundancy this is the same clip twice and then here I did it at 96k and here I did it at 44.1k um, these were all stereo signals so we, uh, what we're seeing is that um, the stereo ones are not returning any audio between 16 and 17k, whereas the mono is. So I got a little more curious about that, and um, I went in and created a sweep from 12k to 24k, a linear sweep, and uploaded that. Um, rendered it in several formats and then uploaded those, the multiples of those. So this first one is 12 to 24K uh, mono and it's uh, rendered at 44.1K before I uploaded to YouTube. And this is what came back. And we can see that it goes up to whatever, we don't know exactly the frequency, but somewhere up here, I did a calc. And um, when done in 48K, when um, I rendered in 48K, we get almost or exactly the same thing. Uh, very similar looking um, waveform. Um, when I do it in stereo though, um, we can see that it stops working we, at a lower frequency. So um, somewhere down here, the stereo 44.1 and the stereo 48K um, YouTube only re returns or plays back um, or has a downloadable file that goes up to this frequency instead of that. Now I don't know exactly what those frequencies are yet so then um, for my next adventure um, I created a series of, pol uh, series of tones. This first one is a sine wave at 15.5k, 15.6k, 15.7k, 15.8k and 15.9k and I rendered that rendered that in 44.1 um, and this was done at 5.1 instead of I actually did six renders so 44.1k 5.1 um, in the stereo mono 5.1 um, then I did it at 44.1 in mono, then I did 44.1 in stereo, then I did 48k 5.1, 48k mono, and 48k stereo. And we see three different results here. Uh, the 5.1 gives us no audio at all. The mono is able to play all of the frequencies between 15.5k uh, and 15.9k. In um, stereo, it chops off here between the 15.7K and 15.8K. So somewhere just above 15.7K and below 15.8K, uh, YouTube will not reproduce audio when uploaded in stereo at 44.1K. And we see the same thing, YouTube not returning any audio um, with the 48K as well. And with the mono, uh, we see it all the way through. Um, so that really narrowed down the window of where it's chopping off. Um, I wanted to know where does the mono chop off in relation to the stereo. 
So we'll go ahead and look at that. And um, here I did the same thing. I took a sweep. I took uh, sine waves at 17.1, 17.2, 17.3, and so on, all the way up to 17.9K. Um, in 5.1, we returned no audio from YouTube in, um, at 44.1K, and we returned no audio at 48K at 5.1. 5.1 doesn't seem to be compatible um, with YouTube, at least in what I'm doing. I don't know how to do that. Um, the 44.1K done in mono uh, dies somewhere between 17.2 and 17.3 kilohertz. And in stereo, we don't see any audio whatsoever. It, um, it doesn't return anything. And I should have a 44.1, 44, I should have a 48K version of this as well. Uh, but I don't see it here, and I'm not going to mess with it. Um, oh, yeah, 48K mono, 48K, 44.1 in mono. Um, all right, so out of all of this, dealing with the high frequencies, we can see that if I upload my videos in stereo, um, I'm going to get at least 17.2K. Um, the frequency response will go up to about 17.2K, slightly higher not higher than 17.3 and if I upload in stereo uh, the top end of the frequency response will die out somewhere between 15.7 uh, and 15.8 K um, that's something I didn't really expect for there to be a wider frequency response in stereo than there in mono than there is in stereo um, um, the next video I'll try and do one soon where I look at the low frequencies. We saw in the initial video that um, we can look here. This one hertz. Let's go right to here. And we can zoom in on that. And this is a one hertz signal for one second. Now we can see that we're getting a full wavelength at one hertz. Well, uh, I've got a tone generator. I've uh, I can download tones. It'll go down below that. Um, so next up, I'll explore the lower limits of a YouTube video. Hey, we'll do DC. How low will it go? All right. Um, something fun. Testing gear and figuring stuff out is um, always interesting, especially when we find little surprises. Uh, cool, cool.